Hi, Lawrence. How are you? What's wrong, Dale? I appreciate the media being here this afternoon. I think about six weeks ago, we were thinking that we probably weren't going to be having press conferences like this, having to do uh, with the increasing um, severity and infection rates uh, of the COVID Delta variant. But here we are. <clears throat> so today, what we want to do is tell you some things that the city has done um, from a proactive standpoint because of the data that we're starting to see, the information that's being gathered, not just in the city of Mobile, but across the state and the nation. Um, yesterday, we sent out an all-city email to our employees, uh, letting them know of, of things that we were going to implement, things that we found out that had <clears throat> worked 18 months ago when we were in the very beginning of the COVID crisis, probably February you know, of last year. <clears throat> So um, we continue to look at the data from the Mobile County Health Department. Uh, unfortunately today, uh, Dr. Uh, Rindy Murphy cannot join us. We had hoped that she would be here so that you could query her about um, some of the thoughts that you may have. But joining me today with, to make various uh, remarks will be Commissioner Ludgood, uh, Dr. Nina Ford Johnson, uh, Dr. Bill Admire from the uh, Mobile County, excuse me, from um, Mobile Infirmary, and Dr. Chang from USA Health. <clears throat> and so we'll all make uh, brief remarks and then be glad to take any questions that you may have. <clears throat> but as I was saying, as we've started looking at the data that's been coming out of Mobile County Health Department, you know, those numbers continue to escalate, which continue to stress the health system. All of our health care providers, which you will hear of shortly, will tell you, you know, it is uh, somewhat like it was uh, probably uh, last March and last April. Uh, no, a year ago, uh, uh, March and April. Um, as of the 2nd of August, you know, we have restricted travel for city employees. We've also encouraged the, the wearing of masks. Um, we are working with the USA Health uh, Department to have a vaccination clinic here uh, in this room tomorrow for everybody in Government Plaza. That would include city, county, as well as the judicial system employees and their families. One of the things that we've been told is that, um, that the opportunity to go into communities, into small, smaller settings, to make the vaccines very easily accessible has something to do with the number of people that will be willing to uh, be vaccinated. That's why we will have it on site here. That's um, somewhat like having gone out into the community at the various churches and done it. But anyway, we're hoping that that model will be the impetus for people to realize, you know, that they really need to get the, the vaccinations. Um, we've also asked all of our city employees, you know, to, uh, if, if possible, you know, to have uh, Zoom meetings and rather, rather than in-person meetings. And as we go forward, based on things that we found out during the the height of the COVID crisis during the Alpha variant was that we will continue to stay in touch with the chief medical officers of all of our hospital. That is the kind of the on the ground best source of information that we have to relate to uh, the city, uh, to the city uh, citizens of the city. So we're really grateful for the relationship that we've built with that group. Uh, and also included in that group is the Mobile County Medical, excuse me, the Mobile Society, the Medical Society of Mobile County. 
And so by having that ongoing conversations, we feel like we're up to date, can share the information with you. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, but where we are is that it is a personal decision that everyone has to make to get a vaccine. And we will continue to share information. Hopefully there will be a tipping point where you realize this is the best interest for you and your family. So we appreciate the opportunity to be with you um, today. And uh, as I said, after each of the speakers, we'll be glad to answer any questions. So Commissioner Ludgood. Like the city, the county is uh, contemplating our next steps to manage this COVID resurgence. And you'll hear more about that toward the, the week's end. We're particularly uh, happy today to have our medical professionals to come in and give us the best information that, that is available. One of the things that we, that is clear to us is that a lot of the reason people are not getting vaccinated is because they are relying on things that are simply not true. And so this is another, opportunity, another effort on our part to make sure we get the right information to the public. Uh, we are really excited about this uh, COVID vaccine event that will be held here in Government Plaza. If there are people out there who are interested in trying to host your own uh, COVID vaccine events, I would encourage you to, to reach out to the mayor's office or to me so that we can put you in touch with the entities that are doing those smaller events. Again, uh, please get your correct information and if you don't believe anybody, I would say rely on your, on your family doctor, the person whose judgment you've been trusting before now. Thank you, Mayor Stimson and Commissioner Luckgood. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Nina Ford Johnson, and I'm the president of the Medical Society of Mobile County. And today I'm not here to berate you. I am here to appeal to your humanity. I'm appealing to you to be your brother's keeper. And your brother or sister may not look like you, okay? Your brother or sister may look or live in Tomaville or Midtown, Crichton Campground, off of Old Shell Road. They may live in Sims, Wilmer, Pritchard, by the airport. Again, your brother and sister may not look like you, but I'm asking for you to, to do what's best for each of us. So what does that mean? It means wearing a mask even if you don't like it. I understand that this sucks. I don't like wearing a mask, and I wear two of them, as you can see. Um, but of course, and I, and I want the children to wear a mask too, even in schools. I think that's a thousand percent necessary. After I leave here, I've got to rush back to my office because I have a busy clinic ahead of me for the day, full of sick kids. And so I'm asking, also that you get vaccinated as soon as possible. And I'm also pleading with you that to be flexible and understanding, this is all new for everyone, even for us healthcare providers, and all we're trying to do is keep everyone safe. But my last appeal is to the faith ministers, the faith community of Mobile County. I feel all of us standing here today are like Noah, telling folks it's gonna rain, but no one's believing us until it's too late and we don't want it to be too late for you and your families. So my faith ministers, I'm calling to you. If you haven't talked to your congregation about this deadly illness, this deadly virus, you are doing your people, our community, a huge disservice. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you don't know the science, you don't know what's going on, don't hesitate to avail uh, yourselves to call the Medical Society, and I would be glad to do it. Because all we want to do is keep you guys safe. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Bill Admire from Infirmary Health System, Chief Medical Officer. Uh, glad to be here to talk to everyone again. The number of COVID patients we're seeing is higher than it's been in the last 18 months. The hospitals in Mobile County, the emergency rooms, the urgent care clinics, doctor's offices are overwhelmed. The, the numbers keep rising as far as the patients are seeing, the patients getting tested, and the patient, patients that are getting positive and then being admitted. We're not sure when this current surge or wave of COVID-19 because of the Delta variant is going to secede and go down, but it doesn't appear to be slowing anytime soon. COVID testing information, where you should ask 
where can you get tested? Call your doctor, talk to the nurse, and if they can help you get tested, you just mentioned what the mayor said and where they're going to offer tomorrow testing, vaccinations and such. But if you need to, call 251-435-1106. That's at Infirmary Health, and they'll be at the DMC, and they can do a drive-by testing at the respiratory clinic if you need it. It is time to get vaccinations, Dr. Nina Ford Johnson, who's the president of Mobile County Medical Society, just mentioned. It is very important. If you choose not to, there's likely a chance that you come down with COVID and you can become very sick and possibly die. The numbers are astounding nationwide and globally of the number of critically ill and patients that have died. And it doesn't seem to be going down. So the main thing is to get vaccinated. And, and, doc, and the mayor is right, it's a personal choice. You know, you have your personal liberty to make choices, but I ask you to make an informed decision. Know the truth, not the myths that you see and hear on social media. Look at the science, the evidence-based medicine and best practices that our physicians who are highly trained across the country are telling you, and the nurses and the hospital administrators, the healthcare workers, they know it's important. These are things that we need to do as a community. You want to help yourself, your loved ones, your family, and your community. There's a duty involved in being part of a community. And as physicians, we, we hear you, we feel for you, but we want to give you the advice that is evidence-based. It's not something you read on the internet. Because I challenge them that say, no, show me the evidence that you're safer without a vaccination. There is no evidence that you're safer without a vaccination. So please consider it highly and ask us for any help that you need if you have questions. Many local retail pharmacies, along with the Mobile County Health Department, are gonna set up places for all our citizens to get the vaccination if they need. Healthcare workers and the doctors, right now we are swamped in the hospitals, in our ERs, and the urgent cares. We're on diversion, all four hospitals. I talked to Dr. Chang on a weekly basis, along with Dr. Iqbal at Providence, Dr. Chang's at USA, and Dr. Liston Jones at Spring Hill, and also Dr. Eichold and Dr. Cepeda that were down at the Board of Health. We all know that this is a crisis. We also talk closely with the mayor and his staff and the local, all the other local leaders and business owners. We understand we're all in this together, and everybody has different ideas, and that's fine. But what I do love about Mobile right now is the communication amongst healthcare, the county leaders, businesses, we're talking. The moment we don't talk, things will get worse. And we're gonna make hard decisions that I think will come out with the right thing. Thank you to the medical community, all the doctors that are working so hard, all for the hospitals, the Board of Health, all the nurses who tirelessly work because we're strapped for nurses in all the hospitals now. We have a shortage. We're also strapped in the urgent cares our EMS works 24-7, transporting patients back and from the ERs to home and such. So please keep all these facts in mind. The country right now, all 50 states have had increase in COVID, increase in hospitalizations, and I think the main thing is we have to do is, is curb this tide with vaccination, masking, social distancing, personal hygiene, and we can do it. School's starting soon, so let's worry about the young kids wearing masks and the teachers and they're coming home, who are they going to give it to? Their parents and their grandparents. Let's be careful with that too. So make an informed decision and I'd like to hand over the podium to Dr. Mike Chang from USA. Thank you. Hey, um, thanks, for, thanks for coming out. I, I would echo the, all, all the things that, that Mayor Stimson and Dr. Edmire and Dr. Ford Johnson said from a subjective perspective, um, all those things are really important to keep in mind. Uh, let me just put a little bit of numbers around this and speak a little bit specifically to some of the issues that specifically involve limited resources within our area. You know, the Delta variant has completely changed things from where we were 18 months ago. The, the Delta variant, the, the amount of virus that every person that's infected with the Delta variant has is about a thousand fold higher than it was with the original or alpha type virus or wild type virus. Um, you don't have to be, um, our, our new, our, the new standard is that if you're around somebody infected with Delta, you can get infected within li literally one to five seconds as opposed to 15 minutes. So before we were saying, try to stay um, 
farther than six feet apart and don't get and try to not to spend any time within six feet with anyone uh, for more than 15 minutes now it's literally seconds so and and, and also you should know that a, over 80 percent of the tests of the sequencing that's being done on the positive tests comes out Delta viral de, uh, with the Delta variant not just here in Alabama not just here in Mobile County but across the southeast and probably most of the country now so it's a much more infectious and almost a different virus in a lot of ways and that you can get sicker faster and it can and, and you will and um, the susceptibility, your susceptibility will be higher. Even those that are vaccinated can get infected with the Delta variant. Fortunately, the vaccine is, is, is doing a fantastic job of preventing death and hospitalization. So that's sort of a look, some of the numbers broadly. Now, to get to the specifics, what I want to speak about um, uh, with regards to our community and healthcare within our community relate to the hospitals that I represent. First, remember that USA Health University Hospital is a trauma center, a burn center, and a tertiary stroke center. And when we get full, we have to divert some of that work. And we, we do everything we can not to, but on any given morning, we've probably got 20, 25, 30 patients in the emergency department waiting for beds to open up. And so when we're full like that, it's difficult um, and it presents a challenge in terms of providing the other unique services that the hospital provides. Let's move on to Children and Women's Hospital. Children and Women's Hospital um, is a pediatric hospital and, for, and a maternity hospital, as, as you all know. On the pediatric side, I'll just tell you that, you know, in the last 12 months, Children's Hospital and our pediatric services uh, diagnosed 500 cases of COVID in the last, uh, in, in children. In the last five days, we've diagnosed 100. So we've done in five days what it took a couple months to do before. That's just the rate that it's going up in children. And, and Children's Hospital has been at or near capacity for the last several months. The reason for this wasn't primarily due to COVID before, but it was, it was due to the fact that we believe that masking and social distancing pushed off all the respiratory viruses that usually occur in the wintertime and we were getting them this spring and summer. So the hospital's been at or near capacity most of the spring and summer. Now we've got this wave of Delta coming and we've got respiratory season coming again. So the concern that we have is that we're, we're going to be push to our limits to the Children's Women's Hospital as well. Those are just some numbers broadly and, and around the two hospitals that I, that I thought you might be interested in to help you understand how, how serious this issue is. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ludgood and, and doctors. Um, we are, as I said, we're working with USA Health to do the vaccination um, tomorrow afternoon from one to four in this room. We're also having conversations about uh, you partnering with USA Health to go into various communities to do vaccination events like that, like that we were previously doing. But we're also uh, are gearing the Civic Center back up to be a drive-through vaccination clinic, and that'll be happening as soon as they can get all the personnel lined up to do it. So having said that, I would be glad to um, <clears throat> field any questions or divert the questions to those that may be uh, best be better able to answer them. Yeah, yes. Mr. Some cities are, are reimposing mask uh, requirements. The uh, city of New York today said they're going to require yeah. proof of vaccination for, to go to restaurants and gyms. Yeah. Uh, are you considering anything beyond just it's a personal choice? Um, go do so it. at this time, you know, the, we're, we're doing as, as, as has been said earlier, we are in constant communication with the CMOs, with the hospitals, with the health department waiting to see what the recommendation will be really from the health department. It is ultimately you know, their decision <clears throat> stemming from the uh, state health department to the county health department. For the meantime, we're going to have an ongoing conversations to see what uh, their thoughts are on that. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion, I could play this for one of the positions, but I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding the Delta variant and just kind of how that affects you know, Mobile County in general and just um, you know, how you know it's the Delta variant with these rapid tests and and that kind of, kind of thing. Can you just give us a little bit of clarification on, you know, how that's been going for testing in Mobile County? <coughs> they might refer to me. Thank you, Bill. There, sh there, sh there shouldn't be any confusion about it. No, uh, the COVID PCR tests that we have that are available and the rapid tests as well will tell you yes, uh, a bi bi give you binary information. Yes, no, it's COVID positive or it's COVID negative test, right? you have to run specific genetic sequencing to know whether it's the Delta variant or not. So the information I'm giving you is information from the local and regional testing agencies that have told us that of all the samples that, they've, that they have run genetic sequencing on, 80 plus percent are the Delta variant. 
And that's no different than it is anywhere else in the country. My understanding is that across the country we're at about 80, or 80, 80 plus percent for the Delta variant. make sure I read that correctly and that's the current status, but also as a layman, I understand that to me when a hospital is on diversion, you're full up, you send patients somewhere else. If you're all on diversion, what the heck does that mean? Well, there's a couple of ways to answer that. Diversion, when, when we say diversion, it, it, it means that, I can, I can speak for our hospitals, but I'm sure it's pretty similar elsewhere. This criteria are met beyond which we can't bring in elective case, elective transfers, and so on and so forth. But when what when all hospitals are are on diversion, functionally nobody's on diversion because the ambulance is still going to show up, right? And 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 so so we still take what comes in the door, but but when we have the opportunity, if, if to um, d divert a transfer that's already safely bedded elsewhere in another hospital in another part of the state or something, we might we might very well. Um, divert that patient. Dr. Chang, how are the healthcare employees doing? I know yesterday Dr. Murphy said that in January we hit the peak with hospitalizations and now we've already, we're passing that with no end in sight. What's the morale in hospitals? It's tough. I mean, I mean, you know, there's been sort of a self-selection process up to this point to say if you're still working in healthcare, that you're committed to it. And so I think those that are working now are committed to what they are doing, and in that way, they're holding up well. But at the same time, we've started um, programs around burnout and stress and promoting wellness and those sorts of things to help our employees cope with what they've been going through for the last 18 months or so. It's a good question. Can you speak to the specific numbers on breakthrough cases you've seen at your hospitals? Uh, because anecdotally, we're hearing suggestions that, that the number is higher than the handfuls that the state health department is, is reporting. Are you seeing uh, more than just a, a trickle? Not sure what you mean by breakthrough cases. Uh, bre breakthrough infections, uh, people fully vaccinated who um, contract the virus and then go to the hospital. Well, I'll give you one answer, then I'll defer to Dr. Admar. The answer is that it was never believed from the very beginning that what you're calling breakthrough cases would not exist. In other words, we've always known that 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 people that are vaccinated would could and would get infected. The difference is what the and what the vaccine provides us with is is um, safety from and and prevention of, of death and serious illness. So if you look across the hospitals now, still 99.5 percent of the deaths are due to, are in unvaccinated patients, and 97.5 percent of the hospitalizations are in unvaccinated patients. So the vaccine is doing what it was intended to do. It, the numbers are just so high now that you are gonna see people with, that, that are vaccinated that do have infection. And, and vaccinated people can pass the, vac, the infection on to other people as well, so you should keep that in mind but as well. But you've, you've not seen a, uh, an increase percentage-wise in, in, in breakthrough cases? I don't have that information specifically on hand. I don't know. Today our number is 136 and that's rising number of uh, COVID patients that are in the hospital. And out of that 136, over 80% of them are unvaccinated. Now, if you look at other hospitals, it may be up to 98% are unvaccinated that are admitted. But we get a lot of referrals from everywhere coming in. So our numbers, they vary from day to day to also. And you're also- saying, You're saying unvaccinated. Unvaccinated. Yeah. You are protected if you are vaccinated. So, you're, so right. roughly 20% of those are people who have been fully vaccinated? They, that, that's today's number. Now that could be 90 and 10 tomorrow. Things change as we discharge people a bit more. I'm just giving you one, one moment of time uh, statistic. Uh, Thomas Hospital is very high. They're much higher. I think they're 90% more or more have been, they're not vaccinated that are admitted. If you're vaccinated, you're protected from being hospitalized, from getting less symptoms, and decreased mortality from dying, all if you've been vaccinated. And just as a follow-up to that, how worried are you about the, uh, the long-term ability of these vaccines to hold up against that, given the experience in Israel and England and other places in Europe where the Delta variant has been mm -hmm. circulating for a longer period of time, they seem to be seeing more as a percentage of these how is, you know, the question is how long is the current vaccinations by Pfizer, Moderna, J Johnson Johnson going to hold up with <clears throat> a mutating virus called COVID-19 and with the Delta variant and other variants. It's doing very well now. Much, it's very, I'm surprised how well it has done. 
But you, you have to remember, even for influenza, they change that vaccination yearly. So I'm sure that all these scientists and benchmark workers that are working on vaccinations will be working on the variants as they develop over time. Dr. Chang, any comment on that? Same, you agree? Yeah. Uh, that's, and I think we're, and now we're talking about booster. Do we want to do a booster shot? We will not know. That'll come over the next few months. Uh, Israel is trying to get the booster approved in, for their country to do it. I, I would suspect if we're going to do it in this country, it could be October, November when we may start because they're doing the trial phases right now to see if it's effective. question and thank you so much for bringing that up masking is a very hot topic you can look at it on the local state and federal level and you can look at it on the medical level what I can do as a physician and my colleagues will agree we highly recommend wearing masks in public in close quarters with other folks especially at hospitals where we have sick patients yes we want everyone to wear a mask and then in your own personal home y'all been vaccinated take your mask off. Now, can that be mandated? That is a political question and a medical question. It's a hot topic, but I will say that uh, I say follow the physicians and, and the healthcare workers on what they recommend for your safety, and it's a personal choice. But if it goes further than that, where the mayor, legislators, governor, or president of the United States, they mandate things, then things would change. But it's a political question and a medical question. Any other questions? You notice how I jump back? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, picking up on some of the questions and the comments, uh, there is hope. There's a solution, and it's vaccinations. I mean, you've heard it in spades today, you know, the, what you need to do. And so I hope that uh, the media will continue to work with us to try to convince people, you know, this is the right thing to do. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but you know, you hear stories about people that in their thirties, you know, in the hospital, you know, all of a sudden they're getting ready to be put on a ventilator and they're begging and say, you know, can I have the vaccine? Well, it's too late. You know, and, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to be over dramatic about it, but all it takes is one of your loved ones to be in a position where you're gonna wish that you had done more than what you've done. So please, as the media, help us explain to our citizens that this is a responsibility that we all have <clears throat> for each other and for the community. So we, we thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great closing message. That was it. Thank you. 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 Thank
So, um, the Biden administration has taken several steps to increase opportunity for black women and girls, their families, and their communities to thrive in the workplace and to be economically secure. From the American Rescue Plan to the executive order to advance diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the workforce, embedding racial equity across his administration's response to COVID-19 and the economic crisis, and prioritizing black mental health. And we, of course, will continue our work. I think I'm almost done here. Finally, last thing here. Uh, as a part of our effort, uh, as the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill is working its way through the Senate, uh, the president is quite focused on lifting up the benefits of the bill to uh, to the American people. So we're going to highlight a different component each day, and we'll also do that through our digital social channels as well. So today I'm going to highlight the unprecedented.